Hello everybody, thank you guys for watching our videos and I've got, these guys are like family to me, I've known them since they were really young kids. You guys still look really young, you know, I don't know what's it's, going on, uh, are you guys taking some kind of It's, it's all the drugs and hard living, you know. I, is that what it is? Yeah, it is, he's old man, I, I am. <laughs> yeah. We kind of grew up in how, your store. How, you much, how much older are you than him? About a half an hour. Oh, there you go. Well, yeah. you know. It explains why I got the normal name Matt and he got Gunner, you know. He, he had to fight so his way out. It's a, an old age home, you know. That's uh, right. <laughs> so, anyhow, these young fellas I've known since they were really young. They're like family to me. And uh, that's Matt and Gunner Nelson, uh, Ricky Nelson's kids. And uh, Ricky, uh, as I'm sure most of you know, except for you young folks that uh, don't get it, he was like one of the teen idols back in the 50s and 60s and in the 70s, and he was fantastic. My, one of my favorite guitar players, James Burton, mm -hmm. played with him, who he I did. know played with you guys. Plays with, played with us, yeah. yeah. And then later on, Tom Brumley was on pedal steel when James ducked out, uh -huh. and our dad reinvented himself with the whole Stone Canyon Stone band, Canyon thing, band right. which is very Los Angeles. It happened here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And of course, their grand folks, Ozzy and Harriet, mm -hmm. uh, had a TV show that was so popular, and all the younger people or teenagers or whatever back in the day would watch the show because at the last five minutes of the show, their dad Rick would come on and do his latest hit and would introduce the hit, and he just, it was like every teenager was glued to that TV. Dad was spectacular, singer, songwriter, and, uh, well, the, who wrote uh, most of the tunes for your dad? Well, it depends, well, in the early years, he didn't write any of his own stuff. Right. You know, uh, he and Elvis, they had people that wrote songs for him, so I think Baker Knight was a big writer for him. Uh -huh. Sharon Sheely wrote a song called Poor Little Fool, he had a number one. Love that, too. And then the Burnett Brothers, because uh, Johnny Dorsey, Burnett. Yep. Yeah, they, I know Billy. Who yeah, Billy, of yeah. he's a buddy. Yeah, and, and so I mean, it's so cool. It really is like a familiar thing. Everybody knows everybody. And and uh, when I actually got into guitar in the first place, the first place I got taken to was here with you with the Weasel Zappa. Yeah. We came on down here. It was the front, Matthew and I were playing the clubs here in L.A. from the time we were 12 years old. We started when we were right. four or five. But Gunner was a drummer. And when, when did I know you guys um, originally? How old were you guys? 18. Like, eight, just, 18? just 18. Just so. 18. Um, Pop had died about uh, in the plane crash about six months earlier. And we were hanging out with Moon and Dweezil Zappa, yeah. and he was really kind of my first guitar mentor. And he said, "Yeah, you got to talk to Norm. We got to get you a proper guitar." So you remember that? One of the proper guitars that I <laughs> sold them was a '57 Gold Top. Not them. Me. I'm the idiot. You. you I'm, okay. I'm, All right. I'm so the here's here's the deal. Oh, it's the best. So story. we 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 should bring this up because it's yeah, we, have to, we, we it's, have to. It's one of my it favorite says, I've done a lot of dumb stuff too in my life. <laughs> but this is right up this, there. No, this is. The, the, I beat everybody when we have like bar bets and stuff. I beat everybody with yeah, this one. I go, one. okay. Well, let me tell you my Norman story. Check this one out. So I sold them a '57 Gold Top for fifteen hundred dollars. Now this thing was pristine. This was, it was good. This is back this, in the day. This, this was, was a stop tailpiece, two PAFs. How many years ago? 30 years ago? Uh, so. well, longer than that. Yeah. Almost 40. It and was 86. So anyhow, mm -hmm. there came a time where you guys needed to buy some expensive pedal board or something well, like that. Well, back then, everybody needed a big old Bradshaw rig, and they needed uh, all the gizmoditry and these cases and all that stuff. And I was super insecure, so I fell for that, and I did it. And I came down here needing the cash to do it. And God bless you. You said... You know what? I'm in the business of selling guitars, but Gun, I can't let you do this. You're, this is dumb. You don't want to do this. The, the, all these are all going to Japan right now. They're not here. The price is about to explode. But at this time, you know, you were the first guy. Uh, we're thinking about uh, vintage guitars and all that. To us, they were just old guitars. Right. Yeah. They were just kind of old tools. Well, when and, I started, they, the word vintage wasn't even used. Right, Later right. on, that became introduced. They were just. Now think about the time too. That was that was the era of the pointy headstock guitar. Right. So if you didn't have like a Jackson or something like that, or know, Kramer, Kramer's or a Kramer, good. and and that was really what was in vogue. It's at the all time. good stuff, but sure. yeah, not, good stuff. Uh, but anyhow, I'd not a '57 Les Paul Gold Top. Right? Yes, I begged them, please don't sell the guitar, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, sold it back to for exactly what I paid for it, and yeah. I thought I was getting a smoking deal. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, and I said these guitars are going to go up in value. And uh, they have. I mean, these guys have had a terrific career, and things have gone very well for them. 
But still miss that guitar. Yes, <laughs> yes, still miss it. So, and, and, and every time I see you, and I miss it too because I made money on it, and I'm, you know, yeah. you're the. Well, I'm the second stupidest no, person no, in the world. No, no, I am your cautionary tale, and I'm proud no, of you. So normally, people would learn from their mistakes, because Gunnar and I are vintage guys now, so yeah. we're really into it. But uh, not too long ago, you said, I have a, a special pair of guitars for you guys, and it was right. sequential serial number 57 J200 Sunburst. Mm -hmm. Sequential mm -hmm. serial numbers. Yeah. And he begged us to buy these things. And, you know, they weren't, like, you know, crazy prices, but they were stout, you know. Yeah. It, was, it was a At nice car. At the time, car. it always seemed expensive. Yeah, it was a nice car. And we said, we said, unfortunately, no. Another big regret. So every time we come to Los Angeles, we live in Nashville now, uh, but born and raised here, every time we, we come to town, we're playing uh, today, uh, we have to stop by Canyon Norman's. Club, which we're yeah, going to get Club. this video up. We're going to have to send oh, it up right Canyon away. Club in Agora. It's oh. going to be fun. We played uh, right. in where were we? Montclair. Montclair last, last night. night. It was fun. Uh -huh. Good show. Canyon Club. But, but uh, yeah, Matt, I wish you'd have bought those two. So what we're doing, I think, today, Norman, is we're at least spiritually reliving the moment where we said, no, we'll pass on those J200s because we have very special J200s here. Now, no, this one is special enough as it is. 57, blonde, gorgeous. Way too good of a guitar for the likes of me. I still play like a drummer, but this one, this one's cool. You got to tell us about this one because okay. this is yeah. this is history right here. This was Phil Everly's guitar, and at the prime of the Everly Brothers, uh, when they were the most popular, the Ed Sullivan Show, mm -hmm. uh, the Dick Clark Show, the Ed Sullivan Show, they were in the Marines and they came out and played this guitar and the other matching green one. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, on the Ed Sullivan show, on the Dick Clark show, they used this guitar and the other matching one, and the Crickets, Buddy Holly's band, was backing them up. And so there is so much history on this. And the last gig that they did together, um, I, I don't know the exact story, but uh, I think Don somehow or other kind of messed up a couple of the arrangements, and Phil got so mad that he actually if you can see bang this guitar and crack this guitar here. It's broken right here. And I actually, <laughs> okay. there was a yeah. guy who was playing wow. guitar for them, Dale Houghton, who played electric guitar for them. And he said to Phil, Phil, you want me to go take this? I can take it and have it fixed. And Phil said, F it, keep it. Wow. And so he had this guitar for like 60 years or so. And then I ended up And, and thank it. God he didn't fix it. Well, yeah. I, you know what? We yeah. fixed it so that it's play, yeah. playable. No, but you didn't fix but the cosmetics. No, I didn't want it because it's part of the history of rock and roll right yeah. here. Well, I've, I've never seen a J200 this color. The Black Stinger, the whole... I mean, it's cool in well, every way. On TV back then, you know, they do t these TV yellow Les Paul Juniors and uh, Because specials. on black and white television, it would look white. This guitar yeah. photographs like a blonde guitar. So, but anyhow... Well, this guitar what, still plays and sounds great, and these guys really are the bomb. Their their vocal harmonies are terrific. They do uh, a show that's a tribute to your dad. Mm -hmm. That's not what you're doing tonight. No, tonight's the Nelson Rock show, but we love doing Ricky Nelson. Remember, it's, it's yeah. killer. Yeah, it's killer. And when I went on the cruise with you guys, yeah. that's what you guys did, and I love it. And I know every one of those tunes. And um, so, well, we certainly respect the history, but apparently we've known you long enough to where now our career is nostalgic. So we've been yeah. out playing with friends of ours, like uh, we did uh, some work with Tesla, with Lita Ford, who's still a sweetheart and is yeah. awesome, and um, all the bands from that kind of 80s hard rock thing that we were a part of. Kind yeah. of, we bookended that era. So uh, we've been playing that, that's where we're playing tonight, which is kind of fun. I'm a little husky because we, we push it. You've been, and you've been working on it. Yeah. I know you're yeah. doing it. How many so, dates are you doing? On about a hundred a year, but we, we sang last night again. We, we did a Nelson show last night. Right. So got, got the three. You know, I got to say too, Norman, this is weird. Um, I was just thinking that Gunnar and I just had a conversation before we came in here thinking about how cool it is that we're brothers have been playing and, and that we actually, uh, we're very different, but we're, we're similar enough to where we haven't really had, and I actually cited you know, kind of a, a, a brother war kind of thing. Yeah. And and I know that, uh, uh, you know, we, we've known members of the Everly family and, and, and love and respect them and they're... they're they the, were you know, the biggest influence on the just, Beatles. And mm -hmm. On us too, you know. So Everybody, the, yeah. you know, they're, they're a harmony blend, but you guys have that brother's blend. But we actually get along. We, we see, do. See, we now, the along. Everly brothers, they eventually at the end they made up. They made up, that's great. Get that's along great. and all that. And uh, there's uh, 
another duo. They were brothers, but they weren't actually brothers, Sam and Dave, mm -hmm. Sam Dave. where those guys didn't get along at the end, and they kind of wouldn't talk to each other. Well, in the Black Crows, you got the Robinson brothers, too, yeah. so, you know, or, or the Oasis situation. Right. So it happens, but what's amazing, I said, how cool is it that we get along, we're still getting along, we're still playing music, to come in here, for this guitar, it, it's actually a commemoration of the moment, the actual moment that the Everleys broke up for 10 years, yep. was this guitar and the smashing of this right. particular instrument. And the fact that it's the two of us, um, I'm kind of getting chills, you know. I, I love the history of, of music. Uh, and again, uh, Phil actually sang with our father at the Troubadour when he cut a live album. He, they sang yeah. Bye Bye Love. And it's a rare yeah. cut, you could, you could catch it on the internet. But just to be holding this and to think about our, our uh, histories with, with the Everleys is an, an We just awesome want to thank you for... Um, for giving us this guitar, for doing this yeah, thank show you. for you. Because I we so gave it to you guys, you know, it is and so this kind. is a great gift. Yeah, thank you, Norman. But this is like the 10 minute gift. Oh, okay. yeah, all right. But anyhow, I love you guys, but not that much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, we'll uh, work on our relationship, okay. But anyhow, all I can say is these guys are the bomb, and their vocal blend is great. Do something for us, let's hear some. Okay, uh, yeah, we'll do something that uh, our friend Gary Burr wrote. He's okay. a wonderful guy and an amazing songwriter in Nashville. We always said, we, we write our own songs. We would only do an outside song if we'd wished. We wrote written it. it. I heard this at the Bluebird one night, and uh, he's given it to us. Yeah, he, so he, Gunner said, hey, can we do that song? He said, guys, I'd give you a kidney. So here we go. <laughs> All right, there so we here go. we go. Just when I thought demons I fought were dead and gone Straight out of the blue, someone like you comes along And I don't mean to turn and look over my shoulder I already know from the sound it's a thousand wild horses thundering behind me, hell bent on running me down. Well, I thought I was fast, but the sins of my past are faster still. And I'm wasting my time trying to leave them behind, cause I never will. Pretty soon I'll do something stupid Like I tend to do And I'll let it loose So if you're thinking That maybe you're the one Who could save me Baby this ain't no merry-go-round It's a thousand wild horses Wandering behind me Nelson, Nelson, Nelson Twins, the boys, Matthew Gunner, doesn't matter. All right. Well, anyhow, we're honored to have you guys. One of the best videos that we've ever had in here. Oh, right you now, are. you guys are the bomb. Um, sincerely, line. for everybody out there, we love this man. He's got a heart of gold, and he yeah. loves you, and guitars and music and everything. Sincerely, you're the real deal. Thank you. So, you guys, and I'll tell you, that Harmony Blend, you know, brothers, there's something there 
that you well, can't Phil and Don did it before, you know. They did it before, and and uh, yeah. and fortunately, it's it's music and our relationship that's really gotten us, you know, through our lives as well. I mean, everybody's got a story. Everybody's got tough times. Absolutely. But, but uh, guitars, music, songwriting, friendship, man, it's it's what uh, puts the color between it's the lines. Been a good life so far. And really, very tasteful. That's what I love about it. Is that you guys, melodically terrific. The blend is great. You guys choose great tunes. And I'm going to ask you to do another video for us, but we're going to send this off so that we can promote your oh, cool. show tonight. Oh, wow. At the right. Canyon, Canyon Club. Club. And tomorrow night we're in Orange County at the Coach House yep. with Nelson. Very nice. So I played there a long time ago. Yeah. So, yeah. Very good. We have to. It's like coming home and it still is funky. We like. You it. guys are like California guys from we most are. of your lives, right? We are. Born and raised, actually. Most people kind of like save up all their money to move to L.A., make their fortune to make enough money to go back home. Right? That's we right. actually were stuck here from birth. Yeah. All right. So, and you guys, are you based in Nashville now? Based in Nashville. No Franklin. Tax. Yeah, Franklin. But you guys are probably based on the road because you're playing so much. Pretty right? much. Look, Ellie's always going to be our home. It is. Um, but when we wanted to just take a, a breather and get some wide open spaces and, and uh, yeah. a, a, honestly, a, a, a more fun and, and casual quality of life. Everything here is so hectic, you know. And, and these guys were part of the fabric of America. I mean, you know, what you did what your dad did, what your grandfather did. Ozzy was a band leader and mm -hmm. Harriet was a singer. Yeah, they? yeah, they actually met uh, on tour. He had a big band. He didn't let the fact that he couldn't write a stitch of music stop him. He ran the band and they had a number one in 1935 with a song called Immense Home. And then our dad had Hello Mary Lou and uh, Poor, Tra Little, and Poor Little Fool. Fool. Traveling and, Man. Traveling Man. Oh, yeah, so many hits. Those were two number ones for him. And then we had our song Love and Affection, which apparently put the Nelson family in the Guinness Book as the only family with three generations of number one hit makers in it. Very cool. And uh, your aunt is... Uh, which one? Wasn't Tracy an actress? That's our, that's our sister. Oh, that's your sister. Yeah, that's our older sister. Yeah, Tracy's an actress. This is what happens when you get older. It's okay. Trey, the other side of the family, though, is interesting because we're Harmons on the other side of the family. Right. So and, Grandpa yes. Tom won the Heisman Trophy at Michigan right. in 1940. And, but it wasn't, uh, was it his wife an actress as yeah, well? Yeah, uh, Elise Knox. Uh, we, we called her Nino, but she was voted by Life Magazine as the, the most beautiful woman in the world in 1940. And Kelly was the Tic Tac lady in the 70s. Remember the one and a half Kelly Mint lady? And Uncle wow. Marcus Gibbs on NCIS, our, our Mark Mark. I was voted the best looking guy from the uh, College of the Blind. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't right. resist. Sorry about that. Anyhow, check these guys out at the Canyon Club. These guys are the bomb. Fabulous. You guys sound better than ever. Guys, you definitely check their show and also in Orange County. Yep, yep. Coach and, House. And, yep. uh, you know, at the Coach House. So. And again, thanks for the gift. Yes. I appreciate it. And we'll be staying in the stock room here while we're in town just to make sure that you have, you know, Thank things you. in order here. So. Okay. Okay. Well, love these guys. The Nelsons.